So given your life experiences uh, and you're moving from a banker to a storyteller, right? How could other leaders like you discover the power of storytelling better, Rana? Um, I think it's by giving ourselves permission to open up and share. I think as we are, I find like when I was in the corporate scene, we're much more guarded as to what aspect of ourselves we reveal. Um, I And I noticed that when I worked in Singapore, that was much more pronounced versus when I was working, say, in the Philippines. Because in the Philippines, it's our culture to chit-chat and tell something about ourselves. But I noticed in Singapore, when I was working, it was much more formal. We only talk about work. We don't talk about, we talk about work, we talk about people at work, about work, but nothing about our personal lives or our interests, the, the things that matter. We can talk about which school we went to and who we know, but that's about it, like the things that you can see in your CV. Yeah. Um, and I think what we don't realize is the value of when we share something about ourselves to each other, not necessarily private stuff, just something a bit more personal that you don't see past, you don't see in your CV. That's right. when we make connections, like such as, for example, stories behind your name. Right. I mean, it's personal, but it's not something that you put in your CV, right? About like how I got my name or how I feel about my name, because right. everybody has a story about their name. And I, I find that's like one of the my favorite ways to break the ice when I'm meeting someone in a professional setting to, um, so how'd you get your name? So like, even when we first met, uh, Priya, I ask you, so how can I pronounce your name? It's like, you right. know, but I, I, but from every Indian person I met, there is a beautiful story on how you get your name. Correct. Yeah. Correct. Correct. And I, I, I think if you, uh, if I'm recalling how my name came by one, of course, the traditional name in, in Priya means love yeah. and, and Shri stands for wealth. Right. And so it's something about uh, abundance in love is what I think. But I think in my case, my father also liked an actress who uh, the same name. So, and I think he named me after that. So I don't know, but yeah, different ways. That's an interesting way to, uh, to, to connect with people. Anna. It's, yes. And often forgotten, right? Because we've so Correct. much look at our designations rather than, you know, the history behind our names. Well, funny enough, you say your father named you after an actress. I was named after a character, the lead character in my grandmother's favorite soap opera. Wow. <laughs> that's the name of the soap opera, Annalisa. And that's how I got my name. Wow. It was wow. very popular in the Philippines. And that's what they decided to name me. Wonderful, wonderful, wonderful. Interesting. I mean, and... Uh, yeah, that's a very a good facet. And I think a lot of them can take back something from this, right? To say, hey, how do you start off a conversation? And it's all people love to, I think psychology, they say, right? People, the most beautiful thing that people want to hear is their own name. And that's what psychology yeah. tells us. And if you can understand a little bit more than just the name and how it's pronounced, I think it's a deeper way to connect with people. And it's a great way to remember people's names. You remember something about them, not just factoids, because that we forget. Correct, 